Welcome to this video, just covering the numerous applications and the calculation of one of the most important KPIs in finance, the return on invested capital. No matter if you're an investor trying to find a company with some competitive advantage or just a manager trying to improve the allocation of capital, it will be hard to get around ROIC. To get a sufficient insight, we will take a, a look at some general information and works part in measuring the creation of value. Uh, further, we take a look at the different components actually needed to calculate ROIC and the numerous implications of those. In the end of the video, we will take a look at a small example to visualize a few of the ideas. So let's jump right in. Imagine you want to evaluate this yellow company here. As a CEO, as well as an eager investor, you might want to know how good this yellow company utilizes its capital, i.e. how much a dollar or euro invested is worth and how effectively the management uses the capital provided. The return on capital invested is a powerful indicator for this and therefore one of the most important indicators of value. As described in the book Value by Tim Collar, which is linked in the description, ROIC is one of the cornerstones of value. Let's briefly talk about one thing that every CEO wants, some even at the expense of profitability, that is ubiquitous in nearly every annual report or earnings call. Growth. But you should know that growth only creates value when ROIC is higher than the cost of capital. Should the cost of capital be higher, causes growth actually destruction of value. Hence, growth is not consistently profitable, even if it seems like everybody is striving for it. In contrary, a higher ROIC is nearly unexceptional advantageous for the creation of value. But we're getting sidetracked. Let's get a deeper look at the actual calculations of ROIC and the components it consists of. Those are NOPAT or net operating profit after tax and invested capital. Let's start with NOPAT. In essence, NOPAT just represents a fancy way to say EBIT adjusted for tax, as you can see in this formula. You can use the stated tax rate or the so-called tax cash rate, as we did here. The tax cash rate describes the actual percentage of cash outflows to tax payments. The cost of this is most, in most cases, it's a bit lower than the stated tax rate to reflect the increase in different tax. Because we don't consider the real tax payments and interest payments, the NOPAT is not affected by leverage. Put differently, the financial structure has no influence on our outcome. This means that ROIC is not getting diluted, which increases our ability to compare various companies with each other. Now let's have a look at invested capital. For visualization, let's go back to our yellow company from the beginning. What you see here represents the operating assets of the yellow company, a construction plant that has all the needed equipment and machinery to produce the products the company wants to sell. This might additionally include assets like goodwill from an acquisition or working capital like inventory. All those are needed to achieve our notepad. All other as assets, for example, a car the owner leased for the company, which it just uses privately, is a non-operating asset. That's because it doesn't have the effect on notepad, so it shouldn't be included in the invested capital. You could also define invested capital over the passive side of the balance sheet, i.e all the capital needed to finance our operating assets, like our production plan that you see on the left. But first let us have a look at the calculation through the data on the active side. We start the calculation with networking capital. Networking capital represents the current assets of the firm, like inventory, cash and account receivables, minus current liabilities, like account payables. After that uh, we add plan, property and equipment, followed by goodwill. Goodwill is just representing an intangible asset and consists of items like brand value or customer relations. Finally, we include other operating assets, assets that we need for a business to function properly, 
but that don't fit really in any of the categorizations mentioned above. And now if we put all those together, we obtain the invested capital that we require for our calculations. On the other side, just like mentioned a second ago, we can equally utilize the data on the passive side. Here we start with combined debt and other long-term liability. Then we, then we include different tax, preferred stocks and shareholder equity to arrive once again at our needed invested capital. Now after we discuss the inputs for the return on invested capital calculation, let's discover how the actual formula looks like. As you can see, the formula is not really complicated. It's just NOPAD divided by invested capital. But to understand the value and its implication for the business, we can extend our formula with the help of the DuPont algorithm, which is a framework of KPIs to measure performance. And here, we just need the first layer because there we can add sales to both sides of our inputs, which means we can now have a look at the NOPAD margin, which is a way to show profit per unit, and the so-called capital turnover, so look at capi uh, capital efficiency. And as you can see, work is essentially just a combination of, two, of those two measurements. So for example, to get a work of let's say 20, which is a quality indicator for competitive advantage, we could have a NOPAD margin of 80% and a capital turnover of 75%. This combination, i.e. relatively high NOPAD margin, is an excellent indicator for consumer advantage. Products might be distributed with a premium because the company might enjoy an advantage like customer captivity. On the other hand, if we now switch the values and therefore generate a relatively high capital turnover, we get a good indicator of a producer advantage. The company could maintain a te technological edge secured by patents, which leads to lower costs and therefore a higher ROIC. Differentiating between those two measurements and their implied competitive advantages can help you to save time during your analysis because you right away know where you might, to, might want to focus your attention. Also, as a manager, you might see where to uh, where improvements might deliver the most substantial impact to improve the ROIC of your company. Now, let's have a look at our example, the People Corp. And the People Corp is selling the People Card. Let's assume we require to find out if the People Corp actually enjoys any kind of competitive advantage. To achieve this, we will obviously take a look at the return on invested capital. On a side note, a high ROIC is one of the most valid indicators for barriers to entry, next to stable market shares. But that is a topic for another video. To begin with, we take a look into the most recent annual report and try to determine the following positions. EBIT, tax cash rate, which we might need to derive from the stated tax rate, net working capital, PP&E, goodwill, and finally, other operating assets. With those inputs, we can directly calculate NOPAD and invested capital. As you can see, we choose the active side to calculate our invested capital. Let's start with calculating NOPAD. Remember the formula. NOPAD is EBIT times 1 minus tax cash rate. As a result, we merely need to fill in our values from the left and we arrive at the value of 180 euro for NOPAD. In the following step, we calculate the invested capital. For this, we simply need to add up all the assets that are needed for the operational business of the company. We assume that all assets listed on the left are needed, so we can just add them up to arrive at an amount of 1000 euro for invested capital. Now it's time to calculate our return on invested capital. We divide the 180 euro notepad by the 1000 euro invested capital 
and arrived at 18%. 18% over a long time horizon is a re reliable indicator for barriers to entry and therefore for competitive advantage. Now let's take it even a step further and try to provide an indicator for which competitive advantage the paper cop enjoys. To accomplish this we look once more in the annual report and try to find a value for sales. For the paper cop is 300 euros. Now we use the point analysis to calculate no pit margin and invested capital turnover. After we divide the 100 euros no pit by 300 euros sales and afterwards the 300 euros sales by 1000 euro invested capital, we arrive at a no pit margin of 60% and a capital turnover of 30%. If you desire, you can check if 0.6 and 0.0 multiplied actually arrive at 0.18. The 0.6 no pit margin is way higher than the 0.6 capital turnover. This might mean that the people corp has the customer advantage. This offers us a general direction where we can expect to discover a competitive advantage. Now after we concluded our little example, I hope you could capture some useful insights regarding return on invested capital. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up and check out my channel for other videos like this. Have a nice day.